Welcome back to the programme. Joining us in the studio is the independent investment expert, Roger Montgomery. He's from rogermontgomery.com. We're going to go to the next caller. We've got Susan. She's from Canberra. Hi, Susan. What's your, call for, what's your question for the panel tonight? Hi, Chris, Roger and Tolly. Thank you for taking my call. I would just like uh, their opinion on MacArthur Coal. I bought it at about 55 cents. Mm -hmm. I know the RSC's come in. Um, it's in my self-managed superannuation fund. I'm just, um, I would like your opinion, please. MacArthur Coal. So I think this stock was trading around $12 before the takeover started coming out. It spiked up to $17, mm -hmm. so it's trading well below um, right now where it's, where it's trading it's trading well below what it what the previous takeover so i think the premiums completely come out of this stock well, well susan susan's made 22 times her money She's you know, <laughs> she should come on the show <laughs> yeah right, um, she susan should come on the show and and talk to everyone about how to pick stocks well that's a fantastic that's a fantastic result um, and i bet you're probably wishing that you had more shares than you do um, uh, but well done anyway uh, look i think this this particular business um, there has been a lot of euphoria around um, coal stocks because of you know the engagement of um, overseas predatory kind of takeovers and, and those sorts of things. Um, the value of this business is is expected to increase. Um, I've got a value for 2011 uh, of $10.45 uh, and 2012 of $12.42. Just remember that's based on a coal price. You know, the, it's based on return on equity, which is based on earnings, which is based on the coal price. I'm not particularly good at forecasting coal prices, mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, if you're if you're comfortable that you're able to do that with some degree of confidence, uh, then uh, then you know there's some valuations to ponder. Well, I think that the, I think Citigroup put out a note the other day saying that the coal market, both thermal and coking coal, is still very very tight at the moment. So it's one you probably could still be leveraged to. I think uh, uh, Macquarie came out and downgraded the price target for this stock from $15 down to $10. But well, the world the world has about 170 years supply of coal, um, based on projections for growing demand and so forth. So yeah, you know, I hear what you're saying about it being tight. But if you sort of think <laughs> longer term, it doesn't look that tight. What, what could be one of the best places to play coal? BHP. You sure. have, are you a fan? We've got about a minute left. To... Yeah, look, BHP, BHP is, is you know, a remarkable business. It, it's, it's so different to what it was a decade ago or 15 years ago. Um, its intrinsic value is rising substantially over the next couple of years, but it's just not at a discount to its intrinsic value yet. Yeah. And I'm very bullish BHP in the short term, but I think we've seen the highs for the year. Yeah. Wonderful. No, I think, uh, I think right now, I think if the stock comes back down to $36, you know, we've seen a lot of clients looking to sort of chip away at that level. I think if it sort of breaks through that level of 35 below that, you know, maybe uh, you could probably look look at the fundamentals of what's driving it that low. Uh, probably the fear trade, and uh, maybe look to get more aggressive and look to short it. There's, there's a risk. You know, I talked about that scenario with China earlier and the property bubble bursting over there. And uh, you know, if that happens, there's a very real risk that people jump on stocks like BHP, saying that you know, saying, look, it's cheap, it's fallen so much. Uh, but there's a very real risk that that, that you know that, that that they decline even further um, simply because that that demand from China stops. But but that's the caveat. You know, I think the China story is a very good one for for decades. Um, but that doesn't mean there won't be speed humps along the way. Indeed, yeah. I think uh, Goldman Sachs recently put out uh, a note saying that they see um, growth in China. They've just come back from there, saying that they see growth in China for the next decade growing about eight percent. Sure. Obviously, there's a couple well, of well, very. You've got to remember. You've got to remember China. China. China doesn't run their economy the way Australia does. No. You know, China. China sits around a big table and they say, "What rate do we want? We want eight percent. Okay, let's go out and get it." And surprise, surprise, they get it. You know, but it's been from fixed asset investment. Um, so, so eventually, you know, eventually that's got to stop and it's got to become output, uh, output growth rather than input growth.